This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at how to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. So we'll start by looking at some assumptions which we'll use for the calculations later in the video. So for a buffer solution that has a weak acid and a conjugate base, for the weak acid, we're going to assume that the initial concentration of the weak acid is the same as the equilibrium concentration of the weak acid. And this is because the position of equilibrium for a weak acid lies to the left. So we assume that hardly any of the weak acid actually ionizes, which leads us to this assumption. So for the conjugate base, which comes from the salt of the weak acid and a strong base, we assume complete dissociation. So we can assume that the initial concentration of the salt is the same as the equilibrium concentration of the conjugate base. So to summarize in calculations for a buffer solution, we assume that for the weak acid, the equilibrium concentration of the weak acid is the same as the initial concentration. And for the conjugate base, its equilibrium concentration is the same as the initial concentration of the salt. So next we'll look at the assumptions for a weak base and its conjugate acid. So for a weak base, we make the same assumption as for a weak acid. So the initial concentration of the weak base is equal to the equilibrium concentration of the weak base. And for the conjugate acid, which comes from the salt, so the equilibrium concentration of the conjugate acid is equal to the initial concentration of the salt. So to summarize, for the weak base, we assume that the equilibrium concentration is the same as the initial concentration. And for the conjugate acid, we assume that the equilibrium concentration of the conjugate acid is the same as the initial concentration of the salt. So next we look at how to derive the expression for calculating the pH of a buffer solution. So we start by writing the Ka, which has the concentration of the hydrogen ions and the conjugate base in the numerator and the concentration of the weak acid in the denominator. So on the right, we can see that we've rearranged the expression for the Ka to solve for the concentration of hydrogen ions. So the H plus concentration is equal to the Ka multiplied by the concentration of the weak acid over the concentration of the conjugate base. And keep in mind that these are equilibrium concentrations of the weak acid and the conjugate base. And if we remember from the previous slide where the equilibrium concentration of the weak acid is equal to the initial concentration of the weak acid and the equilibrium concentration of the conjugate base is equal to the initial concentration of the salt. So here we have the H plus concentration is equal to the Ka multiplied by the initial concentration of the weak acid over the initial concentration of the salt. So we can simplify this to say the H plus concentration is equal to the Ka multiplied by the concentration of the acid over the concentration of the salt. So if we know the initial concentration and the Ka of the weak acid and the initial concentration of the salt, then we can calculate the hydrogen ion concentration and then we can take the negative log of that to find the pH. So next we'll have a look at how we can do this for a weak base. So we'll start here with the Kb expression. So we have the concentration of the conjugate acid and the hydroxide ions in the numerator and the concentration of the weak base in the denominator. So here we've rearranged the Kb to find the concentration of hydroxide ions, which is equal to the Kb multiplied by the concentration of the weak base over the concentration of its conjugate acid. And just like before, these are equilibrium concentrations of the base and its conjugate acid. So if you remember from earlier in the video, the equilibrium concentration of the weak base is the same as the initial concentration, and the equilibrium concentration of the conjugate acid is the same as the initial concentration of the salt. So we can say that the concentration of hydroxide ions is equal to the Kb multiplied by the concentration of the base over the concentration of the salt. And if we know the Kb and the initial concentration of the weak base and the initial concentration of the salt, we can calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions. And if we take the negative log of that, we can find the pOH. And if we subtract that from 14, we can find the pH. Before we look at some calculations, we'll look at two additional equations that can be used to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. And these are known as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equations. So earlier we saw that the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to the Ka 
multiplied by the concentration of the weak acid over the concentration of the conjugate base. So if we take the negative log of both sides of that equation, we end up with the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the weak acid. And the pOH is equal to the pKb plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate acid divided by the concentration of the weak base. So these equations can also be used to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. However, these equations are not included in the chemistry data booklet. So it might be beneficial for students to remember these equations, although you can calculate the pH of the buffer solution using the expression for the Ka or the Kb. So next we'll have a look at some example calculations. So the first example is to calculate the pH of a buffer solution that consists of 0.75 moles per cubic decimeter ethanoic acid and 0.75 moles per cubic decimeter of sodium ethanoate. And we're told the Ka of ethanoic acid is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. So we're going to assume that the equilibrium concentration of the weak acid is the same as the initial concentration and the equilibrium concentration of the conjugate base is the same as the initial concentration of the salt. So in this example, both concentrations are 0.75 moles per cubic decimeter. And we're going to use this equation, which is the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to the Ka multiplied by the concentration of the acid over the concentration of the salt. But we could also use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation as well. So here we have the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to the Ka, which is 1.75 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 0.75 over 0.75, which is 1. So basically, the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to 1.75 times 10 to the minus 5. And if we take the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions, we get a pH of 4.76. So here we can see that if we have equal concentrations of the weak acid and the salt, we just need to take the negative log of the Ka to find the pH. So next we'll have a look at how to solve this using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So here we have the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and we're going to input the concentration of the conjugate base and the weak acid. So the concentrations of both were 0.75 moles per cubic decimeter. So this becomes the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of 1. And because the log of 1 is 0, we end up with pH is equal to the pKa. And the pKa of ethanoic acid is 4.76, so the pH is also 4.76. So as you can see, using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is a little bit quicker than using the expression for the Ka. And as we saw previously, if the concentration of the conjugate base and the weak acid are the same, the pH of the weak acid is equal to its pKa. In the next example, we'll calculate the pH of a buffer that consists of 0.4 mole per cubic decimeter NH3 and 0.6 mole per cubic decimeter NH4Cl, which is ammonium chloride. The Kb of ammonia is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So as you can see in this example, the concentration of the weak base and the salt are different. So we're going to assume that the concentration of the weak acid is the same as the equilibrium concentration, and the concentration of the conjugate acid is the same as the concentration of the salt. So those are 0.4 and 0.6 moles per cubic decimeter respectively. And we'll use this equation together with the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration of the solution. And from that, we'll find the pH. So to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration, we multiply the Kb, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, multiplied by the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of the salt. And this gives us a hydroxide ion concentration of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per cubic decimeter. So to find the pOH, we'll take the negative log of this hydroxide ion concentration, and this gives us a pOH of 4.92. So to find the pH, we subtract the pOH from 14 to give us a pH of 9.08. So next we'll do the calculation using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So the pOH is equal to the pKb plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate acid over the concentration of the base. So we have the pOH is equal to 4.74, which is the pKb of ammonia, plus the log of 0.6 over 0.4. And this gives us a pOH of 4.92,
which is the same as we got using the previous equation. And then we'd subtract this from 14 to give us a pH of 9.08. So we can see we get the same answer using the previous equation or using the henderson hasselbach equation. So you can use whichever method you find the easiest. So the next example, we'll do something a little bit different. So we'll determine the ratio in which a weak acid and a salt should be mixed to make a buffer solution with a specific pH value. So in this example, the weak acid, which is ethanoic acid, has a concentration of 0.5 moles per cubic decimeter, and the salt is sodium ethanoate with the same concentration. And we want to make a buffer solution with a pH of 5.10. And we're told the pKa of ethanoic acid is 4.75. So for this problem, we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, just because it's much easier than using the equation at the bottom, which we have used in the previous examples. So it is possible to use the bottom equation, but the Henderson-Hasselbach equation just makes things much more simple. So here we have the equation and we want the pH of the buffer solution to be 5.10. And here we have the pKa of ethanoic acid, which is 4.75. So we want to find the ratio of the conjugate base to the weak acid to produce a buffer solution with the pH of 5.10. So the ratio of the conjugate base to the weak acid can be found by taking 10 raised to the power of the difference in the pH between the pKa of the weak acid and the required pH of the buffer solution, which in this example is 0.35. And this is the difference between 5.10 and 4.75. So this gives us a ratio of 2.24. And this is the ratio of the conjugate base to the weak acid to produce the buffer with this pH value. So for example, if we had a concentration of the ethanoic acid of 1.00 mole per cubic decimeter, the concentration of the salt would have to be 2.24 times greater. So the concentration of the salt would be 2.24 moles per cubic decimeter. And this should give us a buffer solution with a pH of 5.10. So we'll just confirm this in the next slide. So here we have pH is equal to the pKa of ethanoic acid, which is 4.75. And then we have the concentration of the salt or the conjugate base, which is 2.24, and the concentration of the ethanoic acid, which is 1.00. And if we do the calculation, this gives us a pH of 5.10. So this is how we determine the ratio of the conjugate base to the weak acid to produce a buffer solution with a specific pH value.